This module will cover basic clinical techniques for amphibians. The presentation is oriented mainly towards anurins, but the techniques reviewed can be used on other amphibians as well. This module is intended for veterinarians. While the information may help to educate non-medical personnel about the purposes of various procedures, the practice of veterinary medicine and the performance of the techniques described should be reserved for licensed veterinarians only. It should also be noted that all of the photographs in the presentation were obtained during routine clinical procedures as veterinarians were caring for ill amphibians. The tutorial is divided into three sections, covering diagnostic, treatment, and euthanasia techniques. Diagnostic techniques will cover basic sample collection including blood sampling, synthesis, cloacal samples, impression smears, and skin scraping followed by the imaging techniques of radiographs and ultrasound. Blood can be collected from four locations in frogs, including the heart, the ventral midline vein, the femoral vein, and the sublingual vein. Collection from the heart and sublingual veins are technically very challenging and it is easy to cause irreversible damage via cardiosynthesis. The ventral midline vein is easiest to access. It is located just deep to the skin along the midline. Proper restraint is important while collecting from this site to prevent injuring internal organs. It is recommended that any site where the skin will be punctured by a needle first be cleaned with a dilute chlorhexidine solution to prevent introducing infection. This image shows the needle directed cranially, but the technique can be similarly performed by directing the needle caudally at the same location. The femoral vein is slightly harder to find but lies on the medial aspect of the rear leg and somewhat deeper compared to the ventral midline vein. Celiosynthesis can be performed by first cleaning the puncture site and then introducing a small gauge needle into the ventral coelom until fluid can be aspirated. Use of a butterfly catheter is helpful, particularly if the patient is active. Care should be taken not to move the needle from side to side after introduction into the coelom. If the needle needs to be repositioned, it should be withdrawn to the skin edge and then redirected. This image shows salomic synthesis, but the technique can be performed to collect samples from other structures as well, such as cutaneous cysts or the bladder. Fluid obtained via this method can be submitted for culture and fluid analysis with cytology to help direct further treatment. The cloaca is best found by holding the frog in a normal ventral recumbency position rather than on its back. In this picture, the head is held towards the person's palm and the cloaca, located just below the urostyle, is towards the viewer. A swab can be obtained and then rolled on a slide for cytology or submitted for culture. Alternatively, a cloacal wash can be performed. Use of a soft IV catheter can be helpful in small patients. Fluid is instilled into the cloaca and then either withdrawn back into the syringe or allowed to flow out into a collection vessel. The sample can be submitted for cytology, for culture, or analyzed for intestinal parasites. Impression smears can be an important tool in determining the cause of skin ulcers or lesions. The impression is made by lightly touching a slide to the affected area. It is helpful to make multiple impressions on one slide and to make multiple slides of the same lesion. Slides can then be stained for general cytology or with special stains to help identify a cause. As these results are nearly immediate, they can often be helpful in directing an appropriate course of treatment well before results of culture or histopathology have returned. Skin scrapings can also be performed to identify the cause of a skin lesion. A cover slip or the blunt edge of a scalpel blade can be drawn lightly over the affected area and then smeared onto a slide. The smear may be processed as a wet mount or dried and stained as for impression smears. Radiographs can be helpful in determining the cause of swellings, edema, or abnormal limbs, and in assessing bone quality. For mobile patients, short-term restraint in a clean plastic bag can be helpful as the bag does not cause artifacts on the radiograph and it is difficult for the animal to injure itself. Breathing holes can be placed in the bag if restraint is to be prolonged. It is important to obtain both traditional views when performing a radiographic study. 
The lateral image is best obtained by keeping the frog in ventral recumbency and rotating the x-ray machine to obtain a horizontal image. Here you can see the frog is positioned on a foam pad, the plate is held vertically behind it, and the x-ray beam directed horizontally. You can see that the cystic calculi in this animal's bladder may have been overlooked if only one view had been obtained. Ultrasonography is helpful in assessing the Saloma cavity. More detailed information about the liver, bladder, kidneys, ovaries, and GI tract can be obtained with ultrasound compared to radiographs. The animal can be held in dorsal recumbency and water-based gel applied. Alternatively, the animal can be left in a container and imaged while in a normal sitting position. With this method, it is important that there is enough water in the container to make a continuous path between the probe and the animal, and gel can be used to improve the contact with the container. Any air spaces will make it impossible to obtain an image. We'll now move on to treatment techniques, including ways to administer medications injectably, orally, topically, and through bath treatments. Injections can be given intramuscularly into the coelom, directly into a vein, or under the skin. The intramuscular route is most often used, and the caudal leg musculature is often the best location, as it provides the largest muscle for injection. Intracelomic and intravenous injections can be given using the same methods previously described for collecting samples from these sites. Subcutaneous injections are really only appropriate for frogs, as salamanders do not have much sub-Q space. It is important to be cautious when giving caustic medications such as enrofloxacin as subcutaneous injections, as this may cause sloughing of the skin in that location. Medications and supplements may be given orally by placing them in or on food items, or by placing the medication directly in the mouth. Food items can be dusted with powder forms of medications, or may be injected with the medication just prior to being fed out. The mouth can be manually opened using a smooth, firm tool such as a metal spatula or credit card. Care should be taken to be gentle to avoid causing tears or ulcers of the lips. The medication can then be administered via a syringe or soft catheter. Force feeding can also be performed using this method. As amphibians have very permeable skin, topically applied medications may be easily absorbed through the skin. Care should be taken to dilute the medications appropriately. Micropipettes, similar to those used in laboratories, can be helpful in administering the correct dose to very small patients. Medications may also be administered topically using a bath. Treatment times vary, but are generally one hour or less. Baths should be used with caution in animals with damaged skin as their use may lead to edema or bloat in these patients because they will have more difficulty regulating their osmotic balance. Ideally, the bath is composed of amphibian ringer solution with the medication added to the appropriate concentration. Amphibian ringer solution can be made by combining powdered salts in the ratios noted here or may be purchased as a pre-made liquid. Some medications can change the pH of the water and the solution may need to be buffered prior to use. If you are making your own stock solution from the powdered salts, it is helpful to have pre-measured packets for various volumes of water prepared in advance so as not to delay treatment when needed. While we strive to provide the best medical care for our patients, there are times when euthanasia is the most humane option available. Euthanasia can be performed by a number of acceptable methods. The preferred method is an overdose of MS-222. MS-222 comes as a powder and easily dissolves in water. A prolonged bath in 5 to 10 grams per liter should be sufficient for euthanasia. The mixture should be buffered as the water becomes very acidic and can be irritating for most amphibians if it's not buffered. A quick rule of thumb is to use an equal volume of MS-222 and baking soda which should buffer the solution to near neutral. The animal can then be immersed in the solution as for a bath treatment. Death should occur within 10 minutes and can be confirmed by palpating, escalting, or using a Doppler to confirm the absence of a heartbeat. Other methods include an ethanol overdose, also applied as a bath treatment. It is less irritating for the animal to begin at a lower concentration and then add ethanol slowly to increase the concentration to 
Pentobarbital can be given as an intracelomic or intracardiac injection, though this method tends to obscure the tissues for necropsy analysis. Pithing may be performed, but anesthesia should be induced first. Rapid freezing may be acceptable, but only after anesthesia, and the freezing must be nearly instantaneous. Regular household freezing is not considered humane. Each euthanasia method has differing effects on tissues that may affect the ability of your pathologist to diagnose diseases. MS-222 and ethanol cause the least changes, pentobarbital causes moderate changes, but pithing and freezing can damage tissues and render them useless for pathology. Methods of killing amphibians that are not considered humane include asphyxiation with carbon dioxide, decapitation, hyperthermia, electrocution, or exsanguination. A number of useful references and resources regarding amphibian clinical techniques are listed here. Additional resources can be found at the Amphibian Arc website. Thank you for your time and attention, and good luck with your future amphibian projects.